unit was ordered to Africa to intervene in a civil war. Our mission was to raid a hideout of some guerrilla forces located deep inside the jungle. But the hideout was far away from our entry point. Some died from the heat. Others were killed by the enemy. In the end, only four of us survived. In the official version of Resident Evil Zero, Billy Cohen was introduced as one of the main characters to the story and he would meet Rebecca Chambers inside the Ecliptic Express train as she investigated what was going on. Billy had just recently escaped custody from the military police that were transporting him to Regathon base, as he would be framed for the murder of 23 innocent villagers in Africa. Billy was a second lieutenant in the US Marine Corps. He had his own team of Marines that were sent in to a hostile territory in Africa to attack a village suspected of being used as a guerrilla training ground. But things did not go accordingly, and nothing bad was going on in that village. But their commanding officer did not want to go back empty-handed, so he ordered them to execute them all, and Billy would take the blame for it, with the excuse that he panicked under extreme conditions and unintentionally killed the villagers. This would have him court-martialed and sentenced to death. But in the Resident Evil Zero manhua, Billy's introduction is shared with a group of prisoners like him who happened to be in the Ecliptic Express train while the Bravo team infiltrated it. Not only that, in this version, the Ecliptic Express is already moving and they have to be dropped off on top of the train. Rebecca Chambers was not the only member from the Bravo team who infiltrates the Ecliptic Express. Kenneth and another member were dropped off but Rebecca ends up separating from them while the other two were paired. Kenneth is known as Joe. I don't know why they didn't just call him by his actual name, but maybe the J in Kenneth J. Sullivan stands for Joe. As for the blonde Bravo team member, here they call him John. He could be Richard Eichen, but unfortunately, like with the game, the Monhut does not concentrate on the rest of the Bravo team members. So in a way, it does not matter which character this guy is. They end up running into a group of Umbrella employees who look quite devious. Rebecca should be glad that she did not enter this room. Not that it matters since Billy ends up having some psychotic moments with her anyways. But here is where we are introduced to Billy and his friend, Tom. Tom does not have enough character development, but his introduction is a little more memorable than Billy's canon introduction. Tom and Billy bump into Rebecca, and Tom immediately punches her in her stomach, and they push forward while she's temporarily down. I'd say the only thing that really defines this character is his sacrifice for his friend Billy. After Billy and his group get overrun by Umbrella security guards, bullets start raining everywhere and Tom gets shot multiple times along with the rest of the prisoners, except Billy of course. And before Tom dies, he grabs a grenade, shoves Billy out of that room, and proceeds to run towards the Umbrella security guards taking them all down including himself. After some action and interactions with Rebecca, they take on the giant scorpion, but since the battle against the giant scorpion is actually rather entertaining, I'd like to make a separate video narrating and describing that particular battle. But after they run into that giant scorpion once again, this time it's accompanied by Tom stuck impaled on its stinger. Now this does not make sense and is very over the top, especially because he died by the explosion caused by the grenade he was holding onto, which means he should have been blown to pieces. The other ridiculous thing is that the giant scorpion's stinger pierced through his back like a fish hook and somehow this gives Tom the ability to control the giant scorpion? Okay. Then by the end of this manhua's story, Tom along with the giant scorpion try and help Billy and Rebecca dealing with the final boss of the story, who is not actually the leech queen like in the video game storyline. It's still over the top anime nonsense, but it actually ties in with Lisa Trevor. So that too is going to be its own video so we can solely talk about Lisa Trevor and her tragedy from both her game appearance and the manhu appearance. And that's as much as I can describe the insane anime moment that includes a super Tom. Very bizarre indeed. I hate that it takes the same approach as the RE2 manhu, adding all sorts of characters and ridiculous plot twists that should not be a part of the Resident Evil storyline. But then again, Resident Evil Zero was not exactly on par with RE1, 2, and 3. It too felt very unrealistic when compared to those titles. 
like with Dr. Marcus becoming the Leech Queen and all. Wesker was originally supposed to be the main antagonist of the story, so one can only imagine how the prototype story was going to be like. But since they had to work with the official version of RE0, then they could have at least utilized Billy's friend Tom, have him survive through the train scenario, and work with Billy for a moment to create a type of B scenario. What I mean by that is that in the game, Rebecca gets contacted by Enrico Marini informing her that if Billy Cohen sees her, he wouldn't think twice before killing her. So the same could be said if Tom were to inform Billy not to work with any officers, as they too would not hesitate to shoot him for what his record says. This way, both characters don't immediately trust one another, and it's not just Rebecca that needs to watch her back. So it'd be like, who do you trust in these circumstances? Your orders, your gut instinct, or your friends. Now, some fans would argue that Billy was the only one who survived from his entire squad, so the story couldn't possibly include Tom or any other prisoner. But when Billy explains to Rebecca what happened, he tells her that he, along with uh, just a few other soldiers, were able to survive in the end. Get rid of them! Kill them all! Please, sir! Cease fire immediately! Shut up! Ugh. Do it! Do it. So it's possible that they too could have been blamed and taken prisoners along with Billy who end up escaping since they know they're being framed. And even though the game did not include anyone in Billy's squad being framed and all, I like the fact that the Monhua tried including some of them. What I don't like is that they don't even survive long enough to escape the Ecliptic Express. As I explained in the video about the untold Ari Monhua stories too bizarre to cover, the Resident Evil Zero Monhua story does not utilize the source material as good as the RE3 Monhua did. It took the same anime-like approach that the RE2 Monho series took, and there are more moments where it's completely out of character or it doesn't fit well with the semi-realistic executions that the original trilogy had in store. But when they do concentrate on expanding a specific event, obstacle, or the development of a side character, it does it fairly well. There's even some extra detailed moments regarding the tragedy of Lisa Trevor, but we'll have to take a look at her story another time. So did you execute those innocent people? Forget about it. Doesn't matter anymore. That was then, this is now. Besides, you said you wouldn't judge me. I'm not judging you, but it does matter. Look, now my people think you killed those MPs in the van, but I don't think you did. It was those zombie dogs, right? When they attacked the van, you were able to escape. Isn't that right? You don't get it. I've only got two choices left. Either report to the Marines and serve out my sentence, or keep on running for as long as I can. That's all. That's it for the video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like, as apparently now it doesn't even matter if you hit the notification button. The like button is the only thing YouTube is permitting us to use as a way to send more traffic to that video. If you're a Patreon supporter, check out the exclusive videos on my Patreon. Go support the channel, which is only a dollar. Sacrifice that McChicken for extra quality content, my friend. But anyways, I'll see you all in the next video. And remember to have an awesome day.